The Tachila are an indigenous people of the western lowlands of Ecuador. They were once hunter-gardeners, but now they practice a mixture of subsistence farming and cash cropping. This Tachi man grows more than 10 varieties of plantains on his farm. These are destined for a mestizo trader who will sell them in a city in the Andes. He and his wife own 28 hectares of land, of which they cultivate about 12 hectares. They vary their crops according to availability and market opportunities. But everyone here grows plantains, cocoa and manioc, most of which they will sell to mestizo traders who will sell them on in towns and cities in the Andes. Almost everyone in the Stachi village employs at least one or two mestizo laborers, sometimes several, on a casual basis to clear ground, help with sowing, fumigating, pruning and harvesting. However, this couple do not have enough money to pay the laborers required to cultivate all of their land. Around 16 hectares are left as jungle. This is not just for lack of manpower. They are concerned about the dwindling game and the loss of plant species from deforestation. They also value the forest as a place to walk, think and escape from the noise of everyday life among the trees and the birds. Horses, introduced by the Spaniards further back than anyone can remember, are relatively cheap and can be put to graze on communal land for nothing. Many of the more well-off people in the village own motorbikes, jeeps or trucks, but these are far more expensive and costly to run. These are not just bananas. Here there are five different types, each with their own price. Dominico and Baraganetti were selling at $2.25 a stem in December 2008. Maqueño, Seda and Limeño at $4. By June 2009, they were down to 80 cents and $1.50 respectively. The traders blame this drop in prices on overproduction during the rainy season, but they do not tell the farmers what price they get in the city. Nevertheless, the money this couple makes from growing plantains, cocoa, manioc, etc. is usually sufficient for the family's food and clothing and for the occasional night out at a village dance, christening or birthday party. Before the encroachments of the Spanish colonists, these people were nomadic hunter-gardeners. After sedentization, they began farming more intensively. But still 50 years ago, their villages were inaccessible except by foot or on horseback. They grew their own rice and kept pigs from which they collected fat for cooking. They tapped rubber for candles and fire lighting. Their meat came from the jungle and their fish from the rivers. In those days, they only went to town to buy salt and kerosene, cartridges and machetes. <laughs> Plantains are not only a cash crop, but also their daily bread and its preparation is one of very few tasks performed exclusively by women. They are steam boiled and then mashed and rolled into a noila. This is the traditional staple which is eaten with almost every meal. People say that rice and pasta don't fill them up for long, whereas a noila keeps them going all day. <laughs> A favorite delicacy are grubs of various kinds. This one comes from the base of a banana plant. They can also be used to treat fever in a baby. They must be passed over the baby's body to cleanse it and then returned to the place from which they were extracted, taking the bad air with them. Another type of grub has been left to develop in the trunk of a felled chonta palm. They must be collected between 25 and 30 days after the tree is felled, when the grubs are mature but before they turn into butterflies. The grubs are full of fat. They are only eaten very occasionally when the right sort of palm has been felled. But people remember where the fallen trees are on their land, so they can return to them when the grubs are ready. 
They can be eaten raw, but are often dry-fried and eaten with salt and a squeeze of lemon. A mestizo man has started driving a truck full of grubs into this village to sell them from house to house, but they are expensive and judged to be of poor quality because he collects them from a nearby palm plantation, not from Tronto palms. Cocoa is one of the principal cash crops in this region, and you often see cocoa beans laid out in the sun to dry in front of houses or by the roadside. Like the bananas, they are sold to mestizo traders, and their price fluctuates between 75 and 125 cents a pound. The commercial varieties which are now sown were introduced by the Spanish, but there are two older varieties which go back as far as anyone can remember. These are called matuto cacao, old cocoa, and matequido cacao, lizard skin cocoa, so named because of the texture of the pod. <laughs> they are yellow, smaller, and more elongated than the modern varieties. As much of the white flesh as possible must be removed from the pips if they are to ferment and dry properly, ready to be sold. The flesh to be found inside a cocoa pod is delicious, soft, and juicy, and children in particular relish the opportunity to dispose of it. It is a feast better than any chocolate bar or Easter egg. The planting and pruning of cocoa follows the lunar cycle. Almost every crop here is cultivated in a pattern determined by the phases of the moon. These are rules common to both indigenous and mestizo farmers. During the three days of the new moon, following the full moon, nothing should be sown except grain or maize. Manioc, taro and cocoa sown in this period will drop so many flowers that the harvest will be lost. If they are pruned during the new moon, they will be badly affected and dry out. Also, trees felled at this time produce low-quality timber. Plantains, sown on the full moon, produce fruit which is short and small. Instead, the fourth, fifth and sixth days after the new moon are good for sowing, pruning and the felling of trees. Fish are an important part of the diet and are highly sought after. Fishing with homemade nets or a harpoon is also a favourite pastime. Often people will drop everything to go on a fishing trip with friends or family. But the fish are fewer and smaller than 30 years ago. People often blame the reduction in fish and game on competition from their mestizo neighbours. But the Tachi population in this region has also been increasing now that the diseases which decimated them after contact with the Spanish have been controlled. This area was once covered with what was reportedly the most luxuriant rainforest in Ecuador. Now most of it has been replaced by bananas, cocoa and manioc. The Tachila have long regretted the gradual retreat of the jungle and the increasing scarcity of game, fish and the rarer plants. Today they are beginning to make attempts to restore to their land the richness and beauty which it once possessed, and which their grandparents still remember. <laughs>